Hi everyone. So it's time to talk about love again and um, love, relationships, breakups, um, healing from breakups, getting over a breakup and then moving on. So love is one of those things that it's the ultimate pursuit of humans, right? So I've had the privilege of working with people um, from, you know, young teenagers to people in their um, 50s, 60s, whatever, 70s. And it seems to be the ultimate pursuit in terms of, you know, what we want. All human beings ultimately want to be loved and seen and recognized for who they are. That's the, that's the most basic human sort of desire, right? Is to be seen, heard, uh, acknowledged, respected. And it all comes down into, you know, we want that in the context of a loving relationship, preferably. So whether you're in a loving relationship or whether you're breaking up from one or you're, um, you know, coming out of one, um, wherever you are, or you're still, or maybe you're just looking for one, you haven't found the one yet. You know, it, it's, it's, it's always interesting to me because I think some of my, my people that come to me for um, sessions end up being my biggest teachers. And so, um, and it's funny how life kind of reflects, you know, um, what I'm experiencing and what I'm struggling with. So this is more for me more than anyone else. So I'm not preaching in any sense of the word. But I just thought I would take a minute and share some things that I've learned uh, in the many years of being, you know, single and, you know, being in love and and all, in all my experiences of having worked with a lot of people um, um, who are dealing with love, right? So whether it's my 16-year-old who came to see me a little while ago before he went to bed and was talking about, you know, relation his relationship with his girlfriend, he's going to get so mad that I'm talking about, um, you know... Um, I'm talking about his relationship right now, but he's in bed and he doesn't watch Facebook, so it doesn't matter. Um, you know, and it's, it's whether it's that or whether it's, you know, a, a, new, a couple of new clients that are coming to me or whether it's my own struggles right now that I'm dealing with, you know, in terms of, you know, what I want and what I want in love and who I want it from and how that's not reciprocated. And, and, and then, of course, when it is coming from someone else, then being able to receive that, right? And so I think there's some basic things that we need to talk about. You know, what what makes a loving relationship? I think there's some key ingredients that are very, very important. What, the first thing is respect. I think respect absolutely has to be there for a relationship to be a healthy relationship, um, for a loving relationship. I think, you know, and how does respect show up in a relationship? Um, a res respect shows up in forms of, you know, um, the way you speak to someone, you know, the when you make time for someone, listening to someone, um, you know, respect shows up in, you know, putting another person's needs before you, you know, making them a priority, but never at the expense of yourself, because that's, that's not usually healthy. Um, of course, you know, um, what else do you want in a relationship? You know, I think excellent communication is important, right? There's some, I, I know that, you know, uh, I've been in relationships. I know my ex-husband's a great example. Again, he'll never watch this video, so it doesn't matter. You know, he's one of those people that does not like to communicate, right? And I talk to plenty of people who, you know, have that where, you know, people don't, they don't like to talk. You know, I'm, I'm working with a few people now that it's the same situation. It's like, you know, the husbands or the wives, depending on whoever, it's not always the husbands who shut down. It's a lot of times it's also the women who, you know, don't want to talk about problems, don't want to talk about issues, don't want to talk about whatever's going on. And so their re re reaction, their response to something is, well, we're just not going to talk about it. And we're just going to not, you know, and simple, they will literally say that. That's not usually a, a healthy thing if there is one partner who wants to talk about things in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And usually communication is key, right? You, um, you know, want to be able to talk about what's troubling you. You want to be able to, you know, discuss, you know, whatever is going on so that you can then help each other, you know, learn and grow and become better versions of themselves. I mean, that's what to me, a ideal relationship, a partnership does. Um, 
But then what happens, you know, when for whatever reason, you know, you're with someone, it seems to be going great, and then you break up. And then all of a sudden, you know, one person wants to walk away, but the other person doesn't want to do that. And that's usually the case, you know. It's great when both of you can be like, okay, great, we're done. But, you know, when it's, when you, even if you're both okay with it being done, there's still the loss of this relationship, the loss of this us as you knew it. Um, you know, the divorce, when it's an official marriage and you're breaking up or whether it's um, a relationship that's breaking up, you know, that's still the depth of a relationship that still requires a grieving process that a person needs to go through. And so how do you do that? How do you grieve, right? Well, you know, the natural tendency is to not want to hurt. So what do we do? We immediately look for distractions, right? We either, you know, want to drink, we want to go out and party, we want to, you know, in, you know, medicate with food, medicate with drugs, medicate with, you know, sex, shopping, you know, whatever it is, you know, some of us medicate with seva, which is not a bad way to medicate, right? We distract ourselves with service. That's probably the most healthy form of medication there is because that's a healthy way to sort of channel your time and energy. But when you are when you are actually doing the other things, when you know you're eating, you're eating yourself, you know your your grief, you're you're uh, drinking your grief, when you're shopping your grief, whatever you're doing, which is not the appropriate or healthy response, then what happens is you know you kind of don't learn from the relationship, from the experience, and also you don't then. Um, you haven't taken time to fully close a chapter of your life. Um, and then you ha then you're not able to really be open to receiving the next person. And then what happens is we end up repeating the cycle until um, we finally get to a place where, you know, life stops us or we just kind of, you know, stick our head in the sand and keep going. Because I truly believe that, you know, we're here to learn lessons, right? And we end up inviting and attracting the same lesson, it's just that, you know, um, the, the, the situation might change, you know, the, so what I say, you know, the draw, the plot might be different, the actors, the key players might be different, but the key lesson is usually the same, right? So it might be a new boyfriend, a new girlfriend, it might be, but it's the same issues that show up again and again, unless you actually deal with it. And uh, usually the issues are within myself, within us. It's usually not an external, right? Because at the end of it, the common denominator of all of that is me. I'm the one showing up in all these relationships. And if I'm repeating um, the same pattern, then there's something that I'm not obviously getting. I'm missing something that I'm supposed to be learning from. So a um, couple things that I want to say. So, you know, when... You break up from a, when someone breaks up with you or someone walks away from your life, you know, it's a blessing. Um, you know, the guardian angels will say that, you know, it's, it's usually it takes us a little bit of time to then realize, oh my God, thank God that person walked out of my life because, you know, they were a disaster, right? I would have been in such a mess. Um, you know, I, when I went to Nashville, I think it was a month ago when I went to go see my son perform. My Uber driver was this great guy and we ended up talking and, and he told me um, that, you know, he knew within like the first two days, I think it was, I can't remember that he saw the red flags. He saw the writing on the wall. He knew this woman that he was, you know, in dating was not appropriate, was not okay. He still ended up moving her into her, his home. He ended up spending, I think it was eight or nine months or whatever that they lived together. And then finally, I think it was like the day morning off that I got there was when she moved out of the house. So it's kind of funny because, you know, he didn't learn the lesson, you know, and we were talking about that. And, you know, as, as perfect as a relationship may seem, as perfect as someone may seem, trust that if it's not working, there's a reason it's not working, right? And just accept it and surrender and then step back and learn. What are the lessons I'm supposed to learn from this? What am I not understanding? What am I missing here? So, you know, it's usually a blessing. And yes, your heart hurts. And yes, you know, it 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 freaking hurts. You know, your your heart is breaking and, and that's a normal feeling. But, you know, do you stay in that or do you self-medicate with different things? So my my suggestion is stay in that. And I've done the self-medicating thing for years. 
doesn't get you anywhere, right? At 45, I'm still in the same place that I was at 33. Learned, learned a few lessons along the way, but I'm still sort of, you know, repeating the pattern. So now I've decided what I suggest, you know, is take some time and just detox. Detox from relationships, detox from men or women, detox from just dating, right? Because what we tend to do is we tend to jump um, from one relationship and we want a distraction. So then we get on these online dating websites or we'll pick up the phone and call someone that we used to date or we'll start going out again, right? And we'll start to distract ourselves again by someone else. And I talked about this a few weeks ago, right? It's this it's this whole sort of, you know, rush of um, the new love, right? It's this, you know, new love and the infatuation and it's, but then when the going gets tough, we bail, right? But instead, what I'm suggesting is just take time to be, spend time alone. You know, spend time doing what you enjoy, whether it's reading, whether it's writing, whether it's painting, whether it's, you know, uh, meditating, whatever, you know, just spend time by yourself. It's okay if you want to spend time with, you know, some of your closest friends, but I strongly would encourage you just to spend time alone. Do some journaling you know, pick up an old hobby that you have not picked up in a while. Maybe that alone time, that quiet time, the reflection is where your learning is going to come. It's when you're alone. It's when you're safe and quiet, and quiet is when you will allow yourself to cry. You will allow yourself to grieve. And crying is important. Crying is necessary. You know, I've talked about this and I'll talk about this again. The study on tears that was done, I don't even know how many years ago. You know, they did a study on tears and what, what that was, they went to funerals, they went to, you know, sites of tragic accidents, hospitals where people lost loved ones and they collected those sad tears, right? And then they went to like um, babies being born, weddings, graduations, and they collected happy tears. And what they found was that the, the, the chemical makeup of the sad tears had a significant high percentage of toxins in them, right? What does that mean? What's the conclusion? So that means is that sad tears actually have a high percentage of toxins. So when you're crying and you're releasing these sad tears from your body, you literally are flushing the poison, the toxins, the chemicals out of your body, which in, the, in, in, in conclusion is better for your body, right? Because if you don't cry, then what happens? Those tears stay in and then those end up, those chemicals don't get flushed out of your body. Um, and then they end up going and depositing themselves in different parts of your body. So you get these different diseases, right? You get high blood pressure, you know, you get, uh, you know, uh, depression, sure, depression, anxiety, all that is there, but you also get heart disease and you get, you know, cancer and diabetes and, and or you just get the flu and you get sick, you know, it's, it's more and more, you know, um, evidence is coming up where we're learning, um, that, you know, our physical illnesses are based in emotional, you know, unresolved emotional conflicts and issues. So when you have physical issues going on, what is it that you're not dealing with? What is it that you haven't dealt with? Because usually the, the, the study suggest the research is the belief is, you know, for us, you know, that deal with the energy and deal with energetic healing is that, you know, it's the emotional and the therapy is that when you really have physical stuff going on, a lot of times, most times, if not all times, you can identify a time in your life where, you know, something was not addressed emotionally and they got stuffed up and that ended up festering and getting poisoned and ended up, you know, eventually manifesting in the form of illness. So anyways, coming back to this. So that's why healing is important. You know, when we tell people not to cry, um, because we're not, un we're uncomfortable with tears. We're not comfortable with how to, uh, make whole space for someone who's grieving or someone who's hurting, right? We feel that we have to like, you know, solve their problems and we have to like, you know, make sure make, we make them feel happy. No, we're not responsible for that. What we are responsible for is holding space. Let's learn that phrase guys, holding space. What is holding space? Holding space is simply being present with someone while they are in whichever moment they're in, right? That is one of the most precious gifts that we can give to someone. And if you have someone that, you know, can do that with you, great. But a lot of times you need to be able to hold your own space. 
And to do that requires solitude, peace, and quiet, and alone time. So I'm deviating into a lot of different topics. But the bottom line is, guys, if someone is crying, you know, the please don't say, oh, stop crying, you know, it's not worth it. Or, oh, they'll say stuff like, he's not worth your tears. Or, you know, oh, it's okay, you're stronger than that. No, no, no. To me, I think crying is a sign of ultimate strength. It really is. Because being able to allow yourself to feel that grief, feel the pain, feel the sadness, feel whatever it is that you're feeling, and to allow yourself to then let that go and let it work through your body and out of your out of your tears is such a powerful powerful expression of of just trusting that you're going to be okay trusting that you know your tears are not going to break you and your tears will never break you you know the tears will eventually stop they will end so allow yourself to cry whatever it is you've gone through whether it's a breakup or whether it's a tough situation crying is one of the most healthy things you can do for yourselves um and so and so that come, that brings me to healing right so take time for yourself you know come heal from it because you know we don't see the blessing that a situation is until you know usually further life further down the road so um you know it's it's healthy it's normal it's absolutely understandable that you know your heart is breaking and you know you your dreams of being with someone that you were hoping to be with didn't work out but then you know what trust that there's a lesson here trust that and i'm not even going to say that there's someone else out there for you right because who knows right maybe there is maybe there isn't who knows irrelevant the point is we need to cultivate and foster the relationship with ourselves because to to me and with a higher power, because to me, that is the most important relationship there is. Once you're able to truly be comfortable and happy in your own solitude, in your own singleness, I think then you can bring yourself into a relationship if and when that person arrives to then share yourself with someone, right? Not this, I want someone to complete me, the Jerry Maguire nonsense, you know, that they've perpetuated in our culture of, you know, you complete me or 50, 50, it's complete bullshit guys. Sorry. It's doesn't, it doesn't work. That's unhealthy. That's irresponsible. Um, uh, and that's disrespectful to be honest. And that's not how relationships work or should work. Anyways. Um, I think I've said enough. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, let me think if there's anything else I need to say. Um, are there any questions, guys? Rashawn, I know you asked, what is it that I want? Um, and I think for, for me, and I've talked about this, right? For me, um, relationships are, I want a spiritual partnership with someone that is emotionally available, spiritually awakened, seeking, um, grounded, um, balanced, but also I need to be there. And I think I'm going through a process where I'm not quite there yet. So that's why I'm pulling away and sort of retreating and taking time to just, you know, center and ground and get clear before I step back and welcome and open myself into, to whoever is supposed to be, or whatever next chapter of my life is supposed to be. Um, anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, absolutely ask. Um, and, uh, I hope this has been helpful. Love and light. Take care. Bye.